here with Matt Schofield um, at the Hamilton in Washington, D.C. about uh, an hour or so before you hit the stage. Yeah. And I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Uh, and I think uh, the audience also really appreciate uh, hearing what you have to say. Um, primarily, I think I'd like to understand uh, the gear that you use. Yeah. Which is, you know, everyone is very interested in uh, yeah. the guitars. The, the, uh, the amps, and I know there's a maybe an interesting side story about your amplifier tonight. Uh, yeah, my amp blew up last night, so I'm not even using my amp tonight. Uh, the interesting thing being, it's not going to sound that different, I, only to me. So uh, I mean, that's the, that's the big thing with gear for me is um, uh, obviously I'd rather have my own two rock signature amp, which you know um, is great and amazing, and I love it. Um, but uh, I am using what was available, a good friend of mine, Glenn, let me his amp, he lives nearby, and so we're going to work with that and uh, play some music, which is, is what it's about, you it know, is, yeah. so... Uh, what happened to the amp? We don't know yet, it's so just, uh, I changed all the valves out, and uh, so uh, things happen, it's done a lot of traveling, and, uh, you know, on airlines, and uh, in the van on this tour, so yeah. sometimes things happen, and we're, we're traveling very light on this tour, so... No spare parts. Uh, well, spare set valves for everything, but when it gets down to things like alpha transformers, and you know, uh, I'm, I know enough to be dangerous, but I'm not about to go in there soldering the away. So uh, it's going going home to the boys at Two Rock, and they can uh, give it once over. Yeah, well, that's what happens. You know, that it's um, life on the road. The main thing for me about it here is that it works, and that it inspires me. Uh, hopefully, it ends up sounding good. To, uh, to other people, but uh, read a great line on your website that said, you know, uh, here here's the list of my gear, but please keep in mind that uh, it doesn't really matter what gear you're using; it's about uh, how it sounds and how well, it feels. It's, it's about yeah. First of all, it's about inspiring me to go somewhere with the music, and ultimately, it's a means to an end. So that's the thing. So I, you know, every night someone comes up and goes, "That amp sounds amazing." And the amp, well, it does sound good as long as you, somebody's playing through it. Otherwise, it doesn't sound like anything at all. You know, so um, that's that. Th I know it sounds kind of uh, a little uh, aggressive about that, but it really means nothing unless somebody's playing something that sounds good through the amplifier. Mm -hmm. And it does all start with you, your concept of tone, your, um, you know what you want to get, what you want to hear, and make creating that whole loop between you and the equipment. You can't just go out there and get an amp and it'll make you sound amazing. The, you know, what goes in is what comes out at the end of the day. And you have an amazing tone. Can you tell us a little bit about your your theory about your tone and how well, you found it? Well, it is, it's just trying to please my ear. You know, it's slightly selfish, really. I mean, I don't... It seems that other people like it as well, but I don't. That's not my concern. My concern is that it, I enjoy and I'm inspired by what I am playing um, from the equipment, uh, and that it gives me what I need to then be inspired to make music. So um, it's that way around for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the right way. The yeah, forward, for, forward. Yeah, and so I mean, and I love nice guitars and, and amps. And, and uh, like I say, I love my my two rock amp, way it works, and uh, and uh, my SVL guitar. It's great and it's inspiring. But really, I, ultimately, I want them to be uh, out of the way. Then once we get on stage, um, they, they hopefully are just a medium with which to present the music. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so um, it's nice that people like the tone and that's great because that's what draws me to a player as well if I, the guys I love and that I was influenced by their tone is great but see again when I'm saying tone I don't just mean they're, they're at the amp they're playing through it's it's more of a holistic thing it's that isn't um, interchangeable um, with the player you know it's not an equipment thing so I love Oscar Peterson's tone on piano, and he played a different piano every night on tour, you right. know, but he has a tone, and that's a piano, and it's in his phrasing, and his touch, and his timing, and his groove, and his ideas, and his concept of it, you know, yeah. Um, so, yeah, his tone on piano inspires me just as much as 
you know, BB Kings or Hendrixes or whoever's on guitar. Yeah, I think that's pretty important. Yeah. And that is translated into the audience, I think. Yeah, it goes beyond what we're aiming. Certainly, I guess, on someone like Oscar Peace or someone like BB King, it goes beyond the medium that they've chosen to express themselves to, and they are purely expressing their ideas in the concept of music via a chosen medium. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about uh, the guitarist, the SVLs. Uh, that is made by Simon Law, who's one of my oldest friends in the world, and he's also my, been my guitar tech for a long time, tour manager, front of house, sound guy in Europe. Um, and uh, so we've worked together a long time on and off, and uh, I have a 1961 Strat that I played for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I still have it. And, benchmark guitar for me, but uh, they kept losing it on the airlines on tour, you know, and, and so I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so Simon says, right, we're going to we're gonna build something here, he's built a lot of guitars over the years, yeah. and uh, so, you know, a couple of goes later, he presented me with the, uh, this one we call Daytona, because the paint job. The blue one. Blue, it's from Ferrari Daytona, the paint, the same color as one of late 60s Ferrari Daytona. So uh, he presented me with that one and I was able to play it for a whole gig the first time. Um, I used that one, I go, okay, job done. I mean, I'm a habitual tuner. I have a sign of, you know, I can mute and tune. Um, so I tune between every number anyway. It's especially important when you're playing with B3, uh, as I do every night. You've got to be in tune with keys, or I certainly need to be yeah. bang on in tune and got the reference point on the keyboard. But yes, yeah, so, you know, I don't have to mess around with the Nercom tour. You know, we've like been from freezing Vermont down to warm and humid Florida and now we're back in DC in the last couple of weeks so um, I don't have to do anything at all to it and uh, it sounds great and uh, feels good so again when I go on stage to play music I'm not worrying about that it just does what I want to do yeah that's great what um, strings what, what kind of strings are you using uh, I use Kurt Mangan strings mm -hmm. uh, Kurt is great makes some of the best strings I've uh, ever encountered and I've never broken a single one touch yeah, touch someone. <laughs> uh, they broke a single one ever since I've been using them. So, I mean, I've got one guitar with me. So, fingers crossed, I won't make a fool myself by saying that tonight. But I've never broke one. They sound great and they're, they're again, staying tuned. So, Kurt Megan, uh, we have a signature set. They're um, 11 to 54. So, uh, just regular 11 to 7, a little bit heavier on the bottom. And your pedals, I read again on, online that, uh, you know, you don't have anything that distorts the well, sound. You're not looking for real effects, but... I'm uh, not, I'm looking to, it's, again, it's the kind of holistic thing, so the, 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 the guitar, everything's a continuation, it, very small steps. So, uh, my main overdrive is um, actually, the one I've got now is the prototype of a signature model that comes out this weekend at the NAMM show. Oh, really? As we saw it. Yuki Hayashi from Japan, his company is Free the Tone. Uh, he designed the pedal uh, that is my main overdrive. I've used it for many years. He was with a different company before called Providence, uh, Pacifics, then Providence. Uh, I used various incarnations of it. It's called the SOV overdrive. Uh, various incarnations of that over the years. And um, um, so he now has his own company, Free the Tone, and so we're doing a version that's like, it's just for this year, it's exactly the same as my favorite one. So I had a particular favorite one that he made a few years ago that you couldn't get one that sounded exactly like that one. It, had, it was an early version. Right. So I've used that one for years. So that's just coming out, it's going to be available this year, which is kind of, uh, kind of cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's neat. Yeah, so that's my main overdrive sound, the thicker overdrive. But again, I mean, I've only got like the gain, like 10, 11 o'clock, it's not, I'm using a lot of gain, I said the amp. Everything is set, 
on the edge of the next point for me. So the amp is just breaking up and the pedal is just pushing that more. And then I've also got um, a new pedal for me that I recently discovered. Um, I did use a Claude Centaur for a long time for a kind of nice full boost, but they got ridiculous price wise, you know, like start paying a thousand dollars for them on eBay and stuff. And it's like, it's a nice pedal, but it's, you know, that's no, just it. silly. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, you know, that like, only I would know the difference. See, I could do, I've got a TS-808 tube screamer I could do the gig with instead of the Clon, and I would know the difference, but no one else would. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I've got a new, a new one that I tried that I do uh, really like. It's just that little bit nicer than the other stuff I've tried. It's by a company called uh, Vaming Room. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I've, to check when I see the guys in New York. There's another Japanese company, Vengram, and it's called a Jan Ray pedal, right. um, which the guy who builds my pedal board for me, Mason at Vertex, turned me on to. Um, he said, Oh, you should check this out. Mike Landale has just started using one. And I said, Well, if Mike likes it, it's worth checking out. It's an amazing player. So, uh, so I did, and it's the first thing that made me change the, the clock. So, oh, okay. so that's new. That's a big deal for me. New when? Uh, two months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's a big deal. I mean, I've had the same couple for years. I'm not like a fiddler, you know, like if, if it works, good. I don't keep checking for the uh, next greatest thing, you know. Yeah. It's, again, it's like, well, I can play music with this. So. You drive yourself insane doing that. Yeah, so occasionally somebody puts something in front of you and you go, oh, okay, this is really a nice change. Uh, so, did that, and uh, and then I have a little bit of delay from uh, my mad professor, Delay, those are really cool guys from Finland, they make a whole bunch of great pedals, I have some of their own drives as well, and uh, so uh, that's just a very soft delay, and uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's it. Yeah. Who are some of your uh, influences other than, sort of, I mean, I know Albert King, because uh, you played one of his songs two weeks ago. I, yeah, right. Um, I mean, yeah, Albert King, B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert Collins, were uh, Muddy Wars, and that was the stuff I grew up hearing of my dad's record collection. Right. Um, uh, and lots more, more traditional blues as well, stuff that, I mean, that I still don't know about, but he loves, you know, I have to go through all this vinyl again to dig out some of it. Um, and then for me, when I uh, came uh, of age, you know, started to play, and it was around the time that um, uh, there was a lot of Stevie Ray kind of coming into the forefront for people, so that was a big way in for me. And... Um, also, obviously Hendrix, Clapton as well, when you're a UK blues kid, I guess you obviously check out Clapton, but it was mostly American players for me. Um, and then later on, uh, I, after I'd already been playing for quite a while and playing gigs, and, you know, um, discovered like Robert Ford, uh, yeah, and I was like, okay, well, this is the same, but completely different, the way he was approaching it. And through that, I discovered jazz basically because, of course, it's pre internet, you can kind of just go on YouTube okay. and like go, oh, okay, what's this? So I had really no frame of reference for jazz. I was out in the countryside in the UK, and, and uh, unless I knew someone who had the record, uh, there was no way to follow it. So it was all blues, and then I was like, what's this guy doing? It's different. So uh, through Rowan, I discovered jazz, and then other guys like Larry Carlton and Josh Gofield. You can, really hear players, you, know? you can hear that jazz influence when you play. Yeah, and then the main thing of all is that I started listening to other instruments, not just guitar, through that. So, uh, piano, and piano and especially, other. for whatever reason that resonates with me. Uh, quite, you know, a bit of saxophone, trumpet, and that kind of stuff. Um, but, Do you uh, play any other instruments? Uh, I play uh, drums um, as a hobby. Occasionally down at a jam session. So we're not going to see you out there tonight. I'm not, not tonight, but if you if you happen to be at the right jam session, if I've got a night off somewhere, I might go down and lay down a shuffle somewhere on the kit oh, yeah. and bass a little bit as well. But um, uh, I think certainly yesterday, I would say one of the best things I ever did for my guitar player was learn to play some drums. Yeah, um, it's all about phrasing and groove and, uh, and timing. It makes you very aware of. of um, what you, you're doing yourself, really. So that, that was a good thing to do. Um, 
But no, I don't. I don't play any horns or and actually keys. I've got no idea. I've just never had one in front of me. I didn't, you know, it's, 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 uh, grow with the piano there. No harmonicas or uh, <laughs> no, no. So uh, obviously I sing. So that's your first. Um, Did you always instrument. sing? No, a little bit, but um, uh, so that's still kind of like one day when I grow up, hopefully I'll be able to sing like I play guitar or something. Because you know something like BB King or Apple King, I can talk about their the full package. You know, and just sing and play, and it's it's the whole thing. So right. one day, you know. Yeah. But I've been playing guitar for so long that I've been singing. Yeah, on a serious level. So uh, that's um, and the same also with writing songs and that kind of stuff. You just keep trying to put the whole package together. And for me, it was always finding a context for my guitar playing to go into. That's why we ended up with the organ trio, uh, which I've used for so long, with Johnny um, on the organ, um, because it felt like it was something I could find my own spot in. You know, make it my own. It's a little bit different. So it was more, I found a band that, that worked for me rather than um, uh, going, right, I'm starting a band, I'm right. going to hire some people, if you know what I mean, I found a context. Right, right. So, can we shift gears a little? Well, you brought up writing. Yeah. Uh, and, and do you have a particular writing style? Or do, and do you write all your stuff alone, or do you have anybody that collaborates? No, I, uh, I wish I had a way of writing it. It would be, you know, improvising one way or another at each thing to play it could be a melody or a, a, a riff or something that could then be taken on its own and made into something but you've got to grab these things as they go past mm -hmm. but, um, so I've written a lot of stuff um, with my partner my girlfriend uh, Dorothy Whitting who um, we were together 10 years so all the records Congratulations. yeah all the um, all the records um, got my solo records so say at least two thirds of them together so okay. um, yeah so that's um, that's that's what we do so it could be she comes with an idea or a whole set of lyrics or just a title or you know a whole thing and, and or I have a small bit of lyrics and she fleshes it out and how long you know I mean an average does it take to write a, to, to complete a song I know? don't know like the stuff I'm working on at the moment so I hope to record again very soon yeah, working on a new album a new label and um uh, um, so the stuff I'm working on now is actually a lot of it's been floating around the music for it, you know uh, musically for uh, quite a while actually uh, so it's it's more than like I say like sitting down and focusing it into a song as opposed to just a riff or a sequence or something like that so I really have no idea it could, but then out. other times what's that? The blues album? yeah I mean it'll be you know I do what I do at this point. Right. Right? I'm not about to change. You're track. not going to do a country western. Uh, Definitely not. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can't. I do what I do. I, it's it's what comes out. Do you have to live the blues to play the blues? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, well, it's all relative, you know. Everybody's um, everybody's got a story to tell. You know, we often you know, think you know, everybody thinks their own family is the most screwed up family or you know everybody's this you know there's families you know there's always something um, so uh, obviously I could not possibly relate to uh, a life uh, of you know segregation and um, that kind of uh, dealing with that kind of bigotry and uh, uh, just terrible circumstances put upon you where, where you you know uh, Expressing what it's like to live under that situation, you know, uh, I couldn't relate to that in a million years. I'm, I'm a, you know, middle class kind of uh, white kid from England. How, how can I relate possibly? Right. And so, how can I convincingly sing of that either? Is how it feels, but it doesn't mean that I don't have stuff that I want to express as well. So that's the way I look at it. And everybody has something to express, and I think. Me, that's what blues it is. It's not the notes or the scale or the instrumentation or the clothes or whatever, the gear, you know. It's uh, a shared story uh, and an expression of somebody's story and making a communication, be it vocally, lyrically, or 
uh, melodically and harmonically on the instrument is just as valid, and um, that's what that's what always resonated with me. Um, making that connection with someone else is a shared experience, really. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be about terrible uh, circumstances. It, it could be um, about great, happy, marvelous things, but it's a shared experience. Yeah. Um, I think you're one of the you know uh, lead up and coming blues guitar players that I've heard oh, long, a long long time. Uh, I think that uh, you know our audience, our readership, our online audience will uh, feel the same way. Is there anything you would like to share with them? Uh, well, just uh, thanks for listening and checking out. You know, you know we appreciate people who support live music because that's the most important thing. It's uh, about the uh, experience of. Uh, of uh, getting out there and being part of it, you know, it's a two-way thing like music. So, uh, yeah. so we we appreciate uh, that. And hopefully, we'll get to play for as many people uh, out there as possible. So. Yeah, I have a feeling you will be. Okay. I really appreciate your time. All right, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank Cheers. you very much.